Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, everybody, for being here and for this interesting place we are in. I, I would be very practical. I hope you may, I, I think we suppose many of you have never seen a procedure, so I will show you one. Uh, but before some characteristics of the Medtronic radio frequency catheter, I mean, it, it's a very flexible catheter. It goes in a six French guiding catheter. It goes from the femoral artery to the renal artery using a dedicated short catheter, okay? It runs on a 0.14 inches wire, uh, which is the regular wire we'll all use in coronary procedures. It's very easy to use, and it has a specific design where the electrodes are disposed circumferentially in, in the artery wall to erogate the energy in a 360 degrees distribution. It does not occlude the vessel, so the vessel is not overheating. There is not increment in blood temperature during the procedure, and the release of the energy lasts one minute. So these are interesting data for you to understand how it works. The radio frequency uh, creates heat, and the heat is the physical mechanism through which the nerves are destroyed. The heat distributes circumferentially ac across the artery, and it expands more easily into the fat, where actually the, the nerves are, without creating damage to the closed organs like the lymphatics and the veins. This is a graphic showing how it works. I mean, the energy goes up during the first 20 seconds, and you see that there is a heating of the, of the artery wall, which goes up to 60 or 70 degrees. But the mechanism is set to keep it safe. So if the temperature is going too high, the electrode will be inhibited. Or on the other side, if the contact of the electrode to the artery wall is not good, so the heat is not sufficient, again, it will stop. So you can manipulate from a control you have in your sterile table each one of the fourth electrodes. As I said, the energy is delivered during one minute, but you can put the catheter in different positions and you can do as many ablations as you wish. In, in the, the mean number of ablation per kidney is higher than 20. So it's a very effective therapy in giving energy and we think that this energy is going to burn the nerves, as uh, Andrew, uh, and, and Andrew said before, creating an irreversible damage where the fibro, the, the neuro neurologic fibers are being transformed into fibrosis. So as I said, it's a quite simple procedure. We have prepared this video for you to understand how it works. This is a setting of the CAT lab. You have seen a six French introducer in the right femoral artery, and you should start with a non-selective angiogram of the aorta to see where is the origin of the artery. This is very, very useful to avoid wasting time and giving contrast, trying to find the artery selectively. This can be done with subtraction and geography with 10 cc's of contrast. These are important numbers because in our experience, a renal denervation can be done with less than 60 or 70 milliliters of contrast, which is very important, especially in general, mm -hmm. because no human benefits from contrast, but especially those with impaired renal function. You see that the rate of uh, injection is four milliliters to get this very nice selective injection, four milliliters. You can do this at the beginning, and if you wish, at the end. Since we are not concerned about safety in terms of uh, vascular obstruction, dissections, or spasms that's resolved spontaneously, we don't check uh, continuously the state of, of the artery. Just a final check to make sure that the artery is open. You see, this is the navigation of the 0.14 inches wire, which is a coronary wire. Sometimes you might need to use extra support wires when the vessel, vessels are tortuous. We don't recommend to do oblique uh, incidences to, to understand that because that means that you have to give more contrast. You know when the vessel is tortuous and you change your wire and you use an extra support wire. This is the generator which is connected to the tip of the catheter. You can strengthen the tip of the, of the electrodes to facilitate the introduction of the guide wire. And then this is how it looks. You see the four electrodes entering the guiding catheter. You can see it better. And you see the remote control with the four bottoms to control the energy in all the four at the time or you can select one, two, or three of them, according to your planning. On the basis of the angiography, you will do a planning to decide where you will deliver the energy. So from the external part, a non-sterile 
assistant will uh, turn the system on. It's, it's a, as you can see, it's a rapid exchange system, like a coronary balloon. And you see how easily it advances, even in tortoise anatomy. This is a regular BMW wire. And after reach the position, we retrieve the wire, and this makes the curly shape of the tip that will expose the four electrodes in a circumferential way. Now we are ready to give the energy, so we press the button, click, and it makes a sound. And during one minute, it will be giving energy. What you see on the right side is the temperature, you see in between 57, 54 degrees centigrade and, and the impedance. After one minute, it will stop. You might be aware that during this, the procedure is very, very painful. So the patient needs deep sedation and analgesia because it's not nice to have this pain. And if the patient moves, you may lose the contact of the artery. I have to repeat. So you don't need to have the anesthesiologist in the room, but you need to have the patient very well sedated. Then it's the vessel closure. You can do it by hand or with angioseal or whatever you want. It's just not important. The patient will be able to stand up during the same day and the day after goes home. So going to uh, real practice, uh, I will show you one case that is one of the cases that convinced me that this therapy works. Because, of course, we need to be convinced about what we do. And it's a very special case because I think it's the youngest patient ever treated with uh, really resistant and uncontrolled hypertension. You see the, the lady is 18 years old. At the time of the treatment, when we came to know about her, she was still not 18 years, so we wait until she was 18 to, to, to sign the informed consent by herself. As you see, she has a very long history of terrible hypertension, limiting her life, mm. uh, limiting also going to school, not doing sports. Although the lady was completely normal in, in aspect, she underwent any kind of uh, uh, screening to exclude secondary hypertension. You see she did many MRIs, CT scans, PET, catheterizations of the renal veins. She was living in the south of Italy and she was proposed to undergo renal renovation in a center in Rome. But actually she was never called for the therapy. So her father found our website, which is a very effective way to be contacted by common people. And uh, they came to Verona for an interview. And so we repeated all the examinations to include secondarisms. And we understood that it was essential primary resistant hypertension, despite this therapy that you can read there. Two times candesartan, 10 milligrams of ramipril, two times hundred of atenolol, which I have never seen before, and amylodide, so two diuretics, and amlodipine, 10 milligrams. Believe me, this is not a joke. And despite that, she still had hypertensive crisis with vomiting, seizures, and